Arbitrum is going through a upgrade. Could they potentially airdrop users just like they did at Optimism? Well, it's probably speculation. Time will tell. We'll see what happens. But we're going to go ahead and go over several different things in this video. The first is how you can potentially get this airdrop. The second is a couple of different protocols and projects you can use on Arbitrum. And third is playing the Rotator, which we'll go over all that and more in this video. So let's go and get into this. Also, guys, wanted to notate, if you guys like this type of video format, tell me what you guys think in the description below. I'm trying to steer the channel to where you guys as users can get more value out of it. Bear market rotation. So what this video is going to cover is the airdrop overview, how to potentially get it, some apps on Arbitrum so you guys have a good understanding of what you can use on Arbitrum, how you can play the rotation, what projects you need to use, different tokens you can buy. Remember, on Avalanche, if you bought Trader Joe, you'd be up multiple Xs. If you bought Pangolin, well, you probably would have got uber wrecked. And third, how you can play the Rotator. Timestamps will be in the description below, so if you already know about like apps and how to do the airdrop and just wanna see the Rotator session, you guys can skip to that. The Nitro upgrade for Arbitrum. If you guys have been living under a rock, Arbitrum is going to be going through an upgrade to speed up the chain. It'll also make transaction fees lower. Now there is a lot of speculation about a RB token. And the reason for this is Optimism launched a token and their TVL did multiple X's. Uh, it did like a three or four X. Actually it went from like 200 to like 1.1 billy, something like that. But anyways, airdrop hunting. So ways you can do this, use the bridges, use hop protocol, synapse, swap on DEXs, even using the main Arbitrum bridge. Buy an NFT, there's different NFT marketplaces you can use. I'll go over that later in this video, but it's like Tofu NFT. You can get one on Treasure Dow. Also, if you were on Twitter, I posted a tweet about it. You guys can check out that Twitter thread. I'll put it in the description below so you guys can check out all this. Mint an NFT. This could be like through Treasure Dow minting one of their free NFTs. You can mint a Diamond Pepe with the Dopex ecosystem. Just a Arbitrum native NFT. Or you can do this stuff. This is the Twitter thread. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description below. So here's by comparison. This is kind of a weird and off screenshot, but the above screenshot is Optimism. The below is Arbitrum. As you can see, when Optimism first launched, it started maybe around 200 mil TVL, and then at its peak went to about 1.2 billion. Now, when I say at its launch, I'm talking about the optimism token. You can basically see where I got like the little line things. Um, that's about the airdrop date. And you can see the TVL just skyrocketed on the whole optimism chain. And this has to do with people getting stimmy checks, coming over, buying different tokens, and just money coming into the ecosystem. And below, you can see Arbitrum. It's kind of on a downtrend. But if they do launch a token, me personally, I see them as doing multiple similar to optimism. So Optimism had the drop on, it wasn't July 14th, it was like July 14th to 15th. But TVL tripled at its peak, actually did more than that. Arbitrum at its peak was 2.4 billion, and now it's under 1 billion. So sure, the tokens were at higher prices, like as in Ethereum price, wrapped Bitcoin, and some of the Arbitrum native altcoins, but you can see the TVL is not in the right direction. It's going down. And launching a token will bring more interest into the Arbitrum ecosystem. So here are some protocols that you guys can play around with. So before we get into the protocols, let's go and give you a summary of what we're going to cover. I'll give a brief overview of a couple of the different projects and a TLDR on them. After, I'll go into a demo. I'll show you how to use them like Dopex, Jones Dow, GMX. I'll just do a brief overview. It'll literally be like a minute. So let's go and get into the first project. This has to do with GMX. And these are some of the rewards you guys can earn by either holding GMX and staking it. You can get around 21% or GLP on Arbitrum paying about 26%. So the TLDR on GMX is that it's a decentralized perpetual exchange and it's also a spot exchange. You can either deposit GLP and farm some ETH or Avalanche, depending on the chain you're on, as well as GMX. The GMX token can also be staked to earn some of the protocol revenue. So GMX gets 30% of the protocol revenue and GLP gets 70%. I'll show you what it looks like later in the video. The token for the most part has vested rewards and most are staking the GMX token. The reason they stake the GMX token 
is because it boosts the yield. As you can see here, multiplier points APR. The more GMX you stake, the better boost you get for GLP. Both goes on Arbitrum as well as Avalanche. So this just creates more stickiness for the GMX protocol. Now the next one is cap finance. Now you can see here the TVL is so much, not so great. It's basically the same thing as GMX, but not as much adoption. So the cap token gets ETH and USDC for staking. So if you're staking your cap token, you get ETH and USDC. As you can see in the screenshot, the second one down there. Um, ETH, 70%, USDC, 55%, uh, cap is paying 11%. Bear in mind, if you're depositing both ETH and USDC, there's a chance you lose some of your stake as traders are profitable. It's the same junk, different day as GMX. It's a leverage, so you can trade up to 50x leverage on cap. So traders win, you lose. Traders lose, you win. Token is for staking, revenue share, and you can see TVL is in the wrong direction. Me personally, if you're trying to make a play, cap can do multiples because it's a lower market cap for the token itself, but it's speculation and you can see the TVL is not looking so saucy. The next one is Dopex. So Dopex is a decentralized options protocol. It has a lot of different tools and toggles compared to something like Lyra Finance. The main sauce between Dopex that I really like is that the assets that are deposited are not just sitting idle. These are actually deployed into different yield farms. So the collateral that's put up for any of these options is actually thrown into different farms, which makes a win-win for everyone. So Dopex has a maximum supply of 500K and it's a revenue share token. So you stake it to earn fees. As you can see here right now, it's paying like 30%. It's just from the revenue from the protocol. You also have RDPX. This is a rebate token. So as people are depositing into the Dopex vaults, they lose money. Well, that's okay. They get some RDOPEX or RDPX in exchange and it covers 30% of losses. So if you lose $100, you get rebates in RDPX for $30 worth. I'll show you the protocol later in the video. It may sound like jargon, but we got a lot of protocols to go over. So I'm just trying to give a brief introduction and a TLDR and how you can play it. And the speculation for RDPX is the future value with cents. Right now it's a farming coin. SSOV, single staking option vaults. This is the sauce of Dopex. Remember, the assets that are deposited, instead of sitting idle, these actually earn a yield in vaults or other farms instead of just sitting there. And they even have other options in the future. They're working on it right now where someone buying the options can actually be using the collateral that they're placing the option on to be able to be used in farms and they can pay an additional yield for it. Again, it's just more flexibility, more buttons and toggles, and for some it's more confusing, but for others who understand it, it actually is pretty cool, different features. Now, Dopex ecosystem tokens, these simplified Dopex. Jones DAO, this is basically like a ribbon finance or a stake DAO. Jones DAO basically says, hey, you got some really cool strategies on Dopex. People don't know how to pick the option price. They don't know the expiry date. They don't know how to pick the strike. They, they don't know where to start. So Jones Dow says, deposit in our vaults. We'll do it for you. ETH is paying 10%. Nice, you get 10%. Good for you, Johnny. So you get a yield. Plutus Dow, on the other hand, is basically like the convex model for the Jones and the Dopex token. So these are both governance tokens. Remember, you can stake them and they earn a yield. With Dopex, when you stake, your tokens are locked. With Jones, when you stake, your tokens are locked. Same junk, different day. Plutus DAO allows for liquid staking, and this is what Convex does. Convex on Ethereum is a protocol that allows users to have liquid stake tokens. So normally, again, on Dopex and Jones DAO, when you stake your governance tokens, they're locked. So if you lock them for three years, four years, whatever, you can't withdraw them. So you can't withdraw and go dump and sell them. Whereas with Plutus DAO, they're allowing you to do these with these different governance tokens. Also on the platform, when you deposit into some of their vaults, they're able to offer a higher yield because they own more of the Jones and Dopex governance tokens. So that's the incentive for it. I know it sounds kind of confusing, but this picture is worth a thousand words right here. 
So this is one of the GLP vaults on Plutus Dow. I have some GLP. I'm staking it and I'm earning a 26% yield right here. That's great. That's awesome. But I can take it over to Plutus Dow and they have their liquid stake derivatives and they're voting on these different pools and they're also incentivizing the pools with their PLS token. You can see here, this thing is paying 56% APR, almost twice the GLP. That is the value of Plutus Dow. Of course, there's fees involved if you're depositing or withdrawing from these vaults. Make sure you read into those, but I'm just trying to show you what they're doing. So the next protocol is Tracer, also known as Mycelium. This is just a, again, this is just like GMX, nothing crazy, nothing different. I'm not uber bullish on this one, so it's probably gonna giga moon, but basically this is leverage trading. Tokens can be used for discounted trading fees. I'm gonna to say tokens, this is going to be your TCR token, whatever. I'm not super crazy, so it's gonna giga pump. Umami, same junk, different day. I'm not super bullish on this one, but it's got meme potential. A lot of the vaults are paused. Um, it, specialize in vault optimization but there's like no tvl it's not even in the millions so for the most part it's paused but mean potential for the token low market cap not bullish at all it's a degen then you have sprax dow i'm probably saying that wrong but this is a fractionalized stable coin similar to frax and this has to do with the spa token so the spa token is given in addition to collateral so a percentage of this stable coin is made up of this spa token so if it's 99% USDC, it's 1% SPA. So if I wanted to get 100 of the spare ax USD, I would need to deposit 99 USDC and $1 worth of SPA tokens. So right now they're trading under, well, just about a penny. So I would need 100 SPA tokens. That's how you can look at it. It has a really nice flywheel, but peeps have to want to hold the stable coin for the flywheel to actually do its thing. People don't want the stable coin, then the SPA token is just not gonna do its thing. You have to have something that jump starts the flywheel. That's why you see a lot of volatility with the FXS token going up and down, just depending on people minting fracks. And the same thing with Luna. You can look at Luna as a similar mechanism. As more demand for UST, this also created more demand for the Luna token. With less demand for UST, created less demand for the Luna token. It's not an algo stable coin, this is a fractionalized stablecoin. There's a, a difference between this. UST had no backing, whereas Sprax USD actually has a percentage of backing. At this rate, it's around 99%. Right now, we're in an environment where people are more risk off, but it still has some people that may play. Lots of buzzwords. We all know how this rolls. It's DJ. Now, the next one is going to be Magic. This is also Treasure Doubt. This is a NFT play. On the, wait, this way. That's weird. The camera's in reverse. This is a small brain. This is one of the free mint NFTs. This thing used to trade for thousands of dollars. It's a little under a thousand dollars now because the prices are in magic. But it got a lot of hype with a lot of the free mints just like these small brains. So you use magic, the token, to stake and get rewards. This is a pretty big part of the Arbitrum ecosystem. So just speculation, just saying if there is an airdrop, Probably a good idea to stake a little bit, hold a little bit of magic, trade around on Treasure, De Treasure DAO with some of the NFTs, etc. And it's also used in the NFT marketplace. Now, the other ones are Vesta and Radiant Finance, and I don't, I don't really find any interest in these. These are literally just farm and dump tokens, in my opinion. Uh, there's really not much utility. Farm, dump do whatever you want. So they're probably going to giga moon. Um, Vesta is similar to Abracadabra money. You can deposit collateral, usually interest bearing collateral. So this can be like some, it wouldn't be urine ETH because it's not an Arbitrum, but just giving an example, um, Ave ETH, like on Ave, you deposit it. Those are interest bearing assets. These A tokens, you can deposit them on Vesta, borrow against them and borrow their Vesta stable coin. And similar to Abracadabra. And Radiant is a money market token. Not really interested. But they'll probably Giga Moon. So now let's give a case study on Optimism and some of the alts. They do multiples. Let me show you some from Optimism. This is Lyra Finance. It literally went from three cents to over 22 cents. And this was after the airdrop. Each of these little 
slides, you can see July 13th, July 13th, that was around the airdrop time. And you can see these things took off from a penny, Vela was actually under a penny, to over 10 cents. Liber Finance, around 3.8 cents and exploded to over 22 cents. Thales, same thing, came from 22 cents, exploded over 60 cents. Uh, Zip Swap, same jump, different day, around a penny and skyrocketed to three cents. Dude, the alts, they do multiples. So it has to mainly do with the native altcoins. There are other tokens that are deployed on Arbitrum like Aave. Aave didn't do multiples. Same thing with Uni, same thing with Sushi, Synapse. Sy SNX did do a little bit, but I, it didn't even do a multiple. It went from like a buck 75 or two bucks or something to, I mean, at one point it was over $4. So maybe it did a 2X, whatever. But it's a higher market cap gem. So it's not like a two mil market cap, 10 mil, 20 mil, etc. It's like a higher market cap. It's, it's in the top 50 of CoinGecko. So for ones that typically do multiples, these will be your smaller cap because it takes less money to move them. Also, when you're looking for these ones, you want to look for ones that have the flywheel slash feedback loop. That way, if they do get adoption, an example of this was Velodrome. It did a 10x is because it has this feedback flywheel to where it goes up really fast, but it also goes down really fast. So this is similar to Velodrome, but you need something to kickstart this flywheel and this is why the airdrop is really important because it's like a stimmy check. People get money, they wanna go spend it on altcoins, play around in the DeFi games. The stimmy checks, what they do in the real world is the same thing in crypto. When Pete's has money, they wanna spend it. Just how it rolls. So these are some of the alts, but not all of them. I went over some that weren't even on this list. But in general, this is like the Arbitrum list. By the way guys, if you guys are enjoying this type of video, this type of content, Tell me in the comments below what you guys think of it. And if you guys would like to see more content like this, let me know. Tell me how you guys are doing in the markets. I hope you guys are feeling good. If you are, tell me how you feel. If not, tell me how you feel. This is a decentralized options protocol. So if you wanted to select any of these options, let's say for example, you're bullish on ETH, you would select to do a call and make a call option. So you'd hit manage, and you can either deposit or you can purchase calls. The benefit of purchasing the call is, well, you can have a call option and not have a bunch of upfront capital. If you wanna learn more about options, I made several videos, I made a couple Twitter threads. You guys can check, out, check those out and understand those better. However, if you just want to deposit in here, you can deposit ETH and earn an average yield of 11.95%. So the reason why you're getting this 11.89% is because the person on the other side is willing to pay an additional yield in order to have that insurance plan. The user would be able to buy a call option for the fraction of a cost. So if ETH is trading at 1600 and the ETH call option is selling for 100 bucks, you could spend $100 and still have that exposure to the upside of one whole Ethereum. So that's how you can look at options. And also Dopex has some other strategies like a straddle vault. Whereas with a straddle vault, instead of actually saying, hey, I'm bullish or hey, I'm bearish, you can actually have the mix of the two. So let's take, for example, our Dopex. This is one of the tokens of the Dopex ecosystem. You can see if I was to purchase one of the straddle options, you can see on the calculator when it loads, that the profit is actually whether it's bearish or it's bullish. It just has to hit these two different price targets. I would only lose money if I'm buying this if it stays around the price it's trading at right now. Whereas if it goes to 25 bucks, I make money. Whereas if it goes to 40 bucks, I also make money. This is capitalizing on volatility. And if you don't want to purchase in any of the volatility or say, hey, it's not gonna be volatile at all. I think it's just gonna move sideways. Well, you can simply just deposit stable coins into this vault and you can earn a yield of 942%. No, that's not a joke. You can actually earn 942%. Bear in mind though, that there are risks involved, especially with volatility. And if the price moves down and moves against you, you will lose money deposited into the vault. Some of the previous epochs on Ethereum have been really successful though. Some of them have done a 200% ROI. Yes, ROI, return on investment. So if you deposit 100 bucks, you make 200% ROI. 
that means you now have two hundred dollars so just different vaults you can check out some twitter threads and i'll be making a full video explaining dopex so that's a general understanding of dopex you also have gmx if you wanted to participate in gmx you can posit glp or into the glp vault you can use several different tokens for this this can be Chainlink, bitcoin ethereum some stable coins some uni token any of these tokens it'll automatically pool and balance it to the correct balance of the glp token when you do that you will now have the glp token and you will be earning 26 percent 26 percent paid in eth and well zero percent in gmx so this is all paid in eth right now and on the gmx side you can stake your gmx you can earn both eth as well as gmx it's pretty self-explanatory of uh, gmx protocol there's several different videos on youtube about it to get a better understanding then cap finance this one is extremely simple if you want to deposit into here and bet against the traders you deposit usdc they lose you make money they win you lose money on average you get about 55 percent typically when markets are sideways you should do pretty well with this uh, because traders tend to over trade but something to keep in mind and you also have plutus dow plutus dow this is like the convex like model for jones dow as well as dopex jones dow is simplifying uh dopex by saying hey instead of selecting your strike price your expiry date and how long you want the option etc you just deposit in here and this is your yield uh, so they kind of do the strategies for you you look at it like a stake down so back to plutus dow um, they automate that for you these guys are basically getting the governance tokens of jones as well as dopex and gmx they just started their new gmx vault so you can actually stake some glp in here and instead of getting that 26 percent yield like you saw you can't see it here because my wallet's not connected but it pays about 56 percent um, so it's pretty saucy anyways that's a general introduction to some of the protocols on uh, arbitrum i also explain them later in this video but i hope that helped so in summary, Optimism airdrop was pretty good. So I assume Arbitrum won't disappoint, but of course, time will tell. So just like the nice air, Optimism airdrop, the TVL increased, it seems the same rotation can occur with Arbitrum. I'm not saying it will, especially if there's no airdrop, but it's a trade and it's getting hyped. We are in a risk off environment, so please keep that in mind, but this is just something to keep on your radar. Lower cap alts, should do multiples against the airdrop slash native token. This is not always the case, but is usually the case. An example of one that didn't do this was PNG on Avalanche. It was like, bro, not so much. Whereas Trader Joe's did multiple Xs. Like it was nuts and ham. We're talking like it was a hundred X probably, or maybe, yeah, it was definitely a hundred X, almost a 200 X. So. Please note, if there is no airdrop, that's probably not going to be a good thing, but still, Nitro is a good upgrade, and this is, if there is an airdrop, this is a way you can play it, because that's somewhat of a catalyst for it. Not saying even without an airdrop, there will be no movement over there, just be careful when you're degening, especially if there's no airdrop. So a couple closing thoughts. I want to steer this channel to bring the most value I can, especially in this bear. Let me know your thoughts on this type of video format and drop a like and a sub if this brought any value to you guys. If you guys want to see the projects I'm looking at now and how I'm navigating the markets, consider joining the Digi Squad. Link will be in the description below as well. And I will be continuing this video if you guys are in Discord. You guys will see part two of this. It was a one liner time. Five chapter 12 versus 15. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. True, man. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys in the next one.